Hi, and welcome to my second video series on Autolist programming. In this series, we're going to create a routine that will insert a block for us on a specific layer. If that layer doesn't exist in the drawing, the routine will create the layer for us. In later videos in this series, we'll make some provisions to make the routine easily adaptable to additional blocks. If you're new to Autolist programming, you'll definitely gain something of value from watching this series. I do rec recommend you view my previous series, but it's not necessary. So anyways, let's get started. So initially I was going to have you manually create the tutorial file. But I decided, why not just make an Autolist file that would create all the, all the geometry and layers for you. So I have this file that basically creates three blocks and three layers. All you have to do is basically copy the code. And you can copy just this part of the code. Or you can copy the code with these notes, paste it into a blank Autolist file, and then you'll load this code into a blank drawing. You have to make sure the drawing is completely empty. So you'll run the purge command. I'll show you how to do that in just, in just a minute. So just a warning, this code might not work in some older versions of AutoCAD, and it probably won't work in other uh, other CAD programs such as BricsCAD. Give it a try. If it doesn't work, you might still have to manually create the create the tutorial file, but you'll only have to create three layers and three blocks. And after I load this and run this, I'll show you exactly what you'll need to create. So anyways, I loaded this. I'll close that, uh, I'll close the debugger, and then I'll run the command. It's just called make, make the stuff. So all that program did is it's made three blocks. They're named block one, block two, and block three. And it should have made three layers. Layer green, layer red, and layer yellow. And those have their respective colors applied to them. And I almost forgot to show you what to do before, um, before you run that command. You may have to purge the file, but if you just start from a fresh AutoCAD template, that, that'll, be a, that'll be good enough. But if for some reason you have something in your file, uh, just purge it. Obviously don't purge a file that you're using for something specific. So just go to File, New, any blank template will work. Okay, so I think we're, we're ready to start writing some actual code. So you can go File, Save As, or you can start a new Autolist file. I already got my file named as a Block Insert Tutorial file. Just name it anything that... Uh, that suits you. And within one Autolist file, you can make multiple functions. So I'm just going to leave this function in here. And there's also some stuff I want to grab out of these notes. So I'm just going to use this file for the tutorial. If you find the tutorial is moving a little too fast, everything I've done so far is covered in other videos on, on my channel. But don't hesitate to ask me, uh, ask me questions in the comments below. I'll be glad to answer them and, and get you going, get you caught up. Okay, so we're going to make a a new function. I'm going to call it block1. You literally type the name of the block to insert the block. But your command can be almost anything. So whenever you use the, the defined function, you'll have to put two brackets here. And you don't ha necessarily have to add this, but I just put it there just, to, just as a placeholder. So I'm going to go down here, and I already have uh, some code written right here. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste that right here. I close my command off. And since I have more than one function in, in the file, what I'm going to do is put the semicolons. That tells uh, Autolist not to read this line of code. I'm going to put a, a bunch of dashes. Just make a nice uh, delineator. Like you can use anything here. You can use the the equal symbol. Hash marks, those those appear nice and bold. You can put anything you want here because it won't read this line, so you're you're safe. And sometimes you can make a note like end defund just 
just so you know how far your routine goes. Okay, so I'm going to click this. Load active edit window. Or I could do this. Load selection. So before I get going, I'm just going to... I'm just going to give you a heads up. These command functions... And I'll show you what the, this does, does actually after I ru run the code, actually. But um, once this works, it's going to work in your version of AutoCAD. But different uh, parameters might change how this behaves. In previous versions of AutoCAD, if you had blocks that did or didn't scale uniformly or were or were not annotative, the order of operations here would change. So just be aware of that. The people using older versions of AutoCAD, you might need to tweak this. Anyways, let's uh, I'll load that one more time. I can't remember if I did that or not. Oh yeah, I did because the, the console tells me I did. Now I'm going to go in into my file and test it out. There, now we got a quick way to insert the block. Now in older versions of AutoCAD, that was super useful because you didn't have this, this feature where you could just type block one and it would actually insert the block for you. You still have to mess around with the scale and the rotation angle. Like this, it just puts the block in and it puts it at a scale at one scale and the rotation angle is zero. So what I'm doing is I, I'm using autolist to run the dash insert command. When you run a command with a dash in front of it, it runs the command prompt version of that command, meaning it won't it won't launch a dialog box like the, the insert command will. Any command that launches a dialog box will cause um, your autolist code to basically crash or kick you out of the command. And by crash, I mean it won't crash AutoCAD, it'll just terminate the command itself. So it's not a, not a fatal error, let's say. But anyways, I'm gonna type dash insert, block one. That's my default, but uh, I'll type it anyways. Specify insertion point, okay. Now it asks me for the scale, 1, y scale factor, use x scale factor, sure, and rotation angle, 0. I'll go back into the Autolisp compiler. So command, dash insert, my block name. Now this right here, I've typed pause. That uh, allows the user to pick their own insertion point. And then we have our X scale, our Y scale, and our rotation. So this is just Autolist running our command prompt. Pretty simple. Okay, next I'm going to show you how to put that block onto a specific layer. So I had, had some uh, code on my clipboard. So set var, C layer, current layer, your variable for your current layer, layer red. So let's load that. So now we're getting something a bit more useful. Now we have the option to put our block onto a specific layer. So that's kind of nice, but, um, but it's not very versatile, right? So I'll show you a couple problems that occur when we're uh, when we're running code like this. One common thing is sometimes uh, some offices they don't have their templates set up very well, or sometimes someone's purged layers. So if we run this command with it uh, kind of sabotaged, we get an error message, right? So I'll put I'll put that back. Luckily, the error occurred in this line of code, so I'll show you what happens if you try to run this type of code when the block doesn't exist in the file. So what happens if you try to run a code like that and there's no block, in this case, there's no block 4 in the drawing? It starts uh, searching your support file search paths. 
So one thing I learned that uh, when you're in off, uh, working in an office and you're trying to improve their CAD systems, their workflow, the other users, they don't tolerate that kind of thing. You know, if, if your code doesn't work once or it doesn't work occasionally, they won't use it. So you're kind of stuck using old, slow methods. So one thing with these codes, it's very important that, uh, especially if others are using them, that, that you debug them and find ways to prevent stuff like that from happening. So there's a few ways to prevent that, and that's really what I'm going to go into in depth in this, in this series. So the next videos are going to show you ways to prevent stuff like that from happening. And even I'm going to show you how, if a layer doesn't exist in your drawing, how to create that. One more thing I should note happened is that, um, or that we'll fix later on, is that it changes the layer, but it doesn't change it back to the layer the user was on previously. That's important because sometimes we, we want to insert blocks that are going to, going to be on a no plot layer. But the last thing you want to do is change your active layer to a no plot layer then have the user start drawing other geometry on that layer. So I'm going to show you how to change the layer back to the layer that the user was on prior to initiating the code. So that will be in the upcoming tutorials.